Thinking back, it really wasn't that long ago that most people weren't that fussed about layer 2 scaling solutions. It was kind of a minor distraction. Oh sure, Loopring, Xdymatic, that's cute. But all the ape money is on daddy boy Ethereum. So that's where I'm gonna be because, you know, my liquidity. But then something changed. The assumption had always been that once Ethereum became too expensive and slow, that people would switch to networks that didn't exact such a heavy burden on them. And it didn't happen to begin with, but then, it really did. Binance Smart Chain first and then Polygon have seen an explosion in alt DeFi activity. And as we head into summer, traditionally a period of optimism and positive market sentiment, there is a growing sense that we are moving into what bankless aptly call the great layer two gold rush, a narrative that is set to be dominated by the arrival of roll-ups. Now, we, of course, we have Polygon in one corner, but then there's optimism in the other corner, and then all of a sudden, Arbitrum sneaks into the ring and lands a double choke slam on both of them. But here's the thing, Polygon isn't actually a layer two, but it sort of is, but not really. Confused? I bet. In this episode, we're gonna allow ourselves to be properly spun around by roll-ups, focusing on the differences between the three big names you're gonna hear this summer, Polygon, Optimism, and Arbitrum. Try not to get too dizzy, this is The Defiant. So it may feel like Layer 2s are all shiny and new, but actually we've had them around for some time now. XDAI is a well-regarded sidechain solution primarily designed for low-cost payments with its stable transaction costs. Matic was originally a plasma-only implementation, but has evolved into something else entirely with Polygon. More on that in a bit. And we covered Loopring ZK Rollups implementation a few months back and were impressed by its speed and low cost. So let's come back to Polygon. Technically, it is in fact a sidechain and not a layer two. <laughs> What's the difference, I can hear you ask? Well, layer two solutions are defined by being fully secured by the Ethereum main chain, while sidechains use their own consensus mechanisms. In Polygon's case, it's a POS consensus where validators can stake Matic tokens and run a full node. Polygon launched in April, and since then it has secured more than $11 billion in total value locked in its protocol. It has made massive gains. But the issue with its system is in getting funds back to Ethereum. So to use Polygon, you have to swap ETH for the protocol's native Matic token over a chain bridge. The chain bridge uses a lock and mint mechanism, so you deposit ETH into the chain bridge and that ETH gets locked into a smart contract. Once it's locked, Polygon then meets, mints you an equal amount of Matic tokens. Now when going through the chain bridge the other way, Matic to ETH, Matic tokens are burned or destroyed and then the ETH is released from the smart contract. We've done a ton of videos on bridges, they all work kind of the same way. Now depending on which chain bridge you use, transactions could take anywhere from several hours to a week. For instance, using the Plasma bridge, which inherits its security from the Ethereum main chain, these swaps take seven days. But users can also utilize the POS bridge, which is secured by the same set of validators that have staked Matic to verify transactions on the sidechain, and as such, that swap will take roughly three hours. But on this channel, we keep seeing comments from angry Polygon users complaining about the slow return journey, not to mention concerns over the chain's perceived centralization vulnerabilities. And that now brings us neatly to roll-ups and to everyone's favorite musical superstar, Vitalik Buterin. I'm willing to wait for it. Vitalik is a fan of roll-ups and sees them as the logical scaling pressure relief valve for Ethereum as it makes its slow, steady progress towards a sharded POS design. This blessing from our Lord and Savior, amongst many other things of course, is why there's currently so much attention being paid to roll-ups. So let's dig into what they actually are. And we start with optimistic rollouts. So the big news here is that Arbitrum has attracted a huge amount of attention over the past week after launching to mainnet on Friday, May the 28th, in what actually seemed like kind of a surprise move. And this was just as Optimism announced that they'd be delaying their mainnet launch until July. Uniswap, the largest decentralized exchange on Ethereum, had already planned on launching on Optimism, but because of the delay, the community then decided, why wait? And so Uniswap will now also be launching on Arbitrum. Optimism was in fact the first team to create optimistic rollouts, but like all good open source crypto tech, that source code was quickly forked and iterated on by the Arbitrum team. Now it's worth noting that way back in January, Kane of Synthetix had publicly hung his hat firmly on the Optimism peg, announcing SNX staking on layer two, which seemed like a big deal at the time. So what are optimistic rollups? 
Well, they're not a fruit flavor candy, but they are instead Ethereum smart contracts that relay information from mainnet to a layer two network to handle computations. Put it another way, and to highlight why they're called rollups, the technology rolls up data and moves it off the main Ethereum chain. That data is then received by sequencers. And has anyone else noticed just how awesome everything in crypto sounds? And then that sequencer signs and pushes a bundle of data, which is just the minimum info needed with no proofs back to the main chain. And it does so optimistically, hoping that all the data is valid, but making no guarantees. What? No guarantees? I thought that was what all this blockchain nonsense was about. Well... Well, hold on there. While the optimistic rollup itself doesn't validate the transactions, built into the system is a challenge period, whereby anyone can submit so-called fraud proofs, basically the equivalent of standing up in a courtroom and yelling, Your Honor, I object! I object. To what? So basically, someone can say, hey, that data is invalid, and then the computations are checked, which can be verified through cryptography, and transactions can be rolled back if necessary, to kick out the fraud. Whoever gets caught frauding gets slashed. Oh yeah, more epic language here. Sequencers, for one, stake tokens in the network to be able to do that job, and if they execute transactions as expected, then they receive staking rewards for their work. But if they don't execute appropriately, the tokens they've staked get taken. This process, while it seems complex, and it is, is said to create 100 times more throughput than the Ethereum mainnet, all without the high gas fees that currently price many off of the main chain. Now, another great thing about optimistic rollups is the fact that the technology utilizes all the existing Ethereum tooling for developers with little to no modifications. And this means that ETH developers can pretty easily just jump over to building applications and other cool shit on platforms that use optimistic rollups. So the onboarding is slight. So what's the difference between Arbitrum and optimism then? Well, they're basically the same, leveraging the same basic philosophy, but if we were to dig really deep down into the nitty gritty, Arbitrum's fraud proofs seek to find the very specific point of disagreement over transaction history, whereas Optimism's tech looks at fraud a bit more holistically. And this means that Arbitrum has a higher transaction capacity, equating to higher performance. Optimism and Arbitrum use smart contracts that reside inside Ethereum, and that means that they don't actually use their own native token like Polygon, but instead use ETH as their currency. And in the case of Arbitrum, transactional costs are in fact paid in ARB gas. And if you check the video that we released on Wednesday, you'll see sort of how that works. Now, optimistic rollup does have disadvantages. That challenge period I mentioned earlier where people have an opportunity to call fraud. Both Optimism, the company, and Arbitrum allow one week for that challenge period, which means that transactions in a bundle that is under suspicion can be held in limbo for one week before they're verified and released. Now, separate of all this, while optimistic rollups might make for a more decentralized process, the tech also works under the assumption that there in fact exists an honest majority of Ethereum validators. They are optimistic. Now, I mentioned Loopring earlier, but there are more ZK rollups on the way, such as ZK Sync, Starkware, ZK Swap, Aztec, and Hermes. Now, the difference between these two types of rollups are as follows. ZK rollups run computation off chain, then submit a validity proof to the chain. Optimistic rollups assume transactions are valid by default and only run computation via the fraud proof in the event of a challenge. Now, if you want to learn more about this, the ethereum.org website is a fantastic resource, really nice and succinctly written. So the upshot of this is that we're probably very likely to see another golden DeFi summer as these new avenues of operation open up. Now, what really kicked off the gold rush 12 months ago was the arrival of the comp token on Compound, which then ignited what became known as farming. Now, once developers port over to one or any of these solutions, the thinking seems to be that those protocols will begin slinging tokens of their own as rewards to incentivize users to jump ship. Now, will Arbitrum and Optimism issue their own token? Well, they don't have one right now, but then neither do Uniswap until it did. Whatever happens, it is certainly going to be exciting. Now, with thanks to Bailey Roadsall, this was The Defiant. Yeah.